Hello and welcome, hopefully welcome back. So in this video, um, a continuation of uh, an overview of the basic solo model. Um, we have led up to here where we kind of set up the model, we solve for the steady state level of capital, we kind of started off with a solo diagram, and now we're going to talk about transition dynamics and convergence to the steady state. So realize that this model, uh, remember, remember when we introduced the setup of the model, we're dealing um, with a model that's dynamic, so it's something that evolves through time. So um, well, you could uh, you could use the solo diagram to think about where steady state levels are, but you could also take this information and create a time series graph to see how the key variables that we care about, you know, like output, consumption, investment, uh, as well as per capita values of all those things, um, evolve through time. Uh, and then uh, you could also uh, that that's, being able to do this is also going to help when we um, shock make shocks to the economy to see how they affect the economy through time. So uh, yeah, how do I how do we do this? How do we set this up? Well, here's our solo diagram that we'd set up before. So our green line is the investment line, reflecting um, given some amount of capital per worker. This is how much um, is going to be uh, saved and invested and converted into capital in the future. Uh, the yellow line here is our break-even investment line. So given a certain amount of capital, this is the amount of investment required to keep that capital per worker stock constant. Uh, and then the red line here is just output per worker. Um, so when we found the steady state, you know, we'd done this both in the diagram and by equations, we found the point where uh, investment equals the uh, break-even uh, break investment required to keep the um, capital per worker constant. So this is our steady state level of capital per worker. And associated with that level of capital per worker, we have output per worker of this level. So that's our, our Y star. Um, so in terms of transition dynamics and convergence, uh, we've walked through uh, using the diagram why if the capital stock happened to be at any point down here, um, it's going to converge up towards the city state level of capital. The reason why is that investment is great, greater than the break-even investment line. So the amount that's being invested in the economy and saved in the economy and converted into the capital stock is greater than the amount required to keep that constant. So the difference between these two uh, is how much the capital stock is increasing uh, in per worker terms. And then similarly, if the uh, capital if the capital per worker stock happened to be any of this territory and above, uh, it's going to converge down towards the steady state level. So let's see what that might look like in a time series graph. So we have a steady state level, K star. Um, what if we just started off somewhere way, way down here? What would happen? Well, I put together a little spreadsheet to show what would happen. So with this, uh, so here we're dealing with aggregate levels. Uh, here we have um, aggregate capital. Uh, here we have aggregate output Y. So right at this little dotted line, I destroyed a significant portion of the capital stock. So I, uh, you know, we were at the steady state before, and then at this point, all of a sudden, a whole bunch of capital has been destroyed, disappears, uh, and so the the very next period, we start off at a very low amount of capital. And what we see is when the cap when capital is very low, right, investment's much greater than um, the, the break even investment required, and so we start to see an increase in the capital stock. Uh, and along with the increase in the capital stock, we see an increase in output. Going to in, in terms of per capita terms, you know, per worker terms. Um, this is lowercase k, this is lowercase y, and you have a very similar story that looks looks pretty much the same. Um, so right at this gray dotted line, the vertical dotted line is where I destroy a significant portion of the capital stock. We see capital per worker drop do, like significantly from my example, and then we see the transition over to it. Looking at an investment and consumption, you see the same story. You see that uh, investment is slowly increasing back up to that steady state level. Uh, the other thing to note is that uh, if we started off way at this point, investment is significantly higher than the break-even investment required. And so um, because the difference between investment and break-even investment required is our change in capital, so uh, the difference between this line and this line is how much capital is going to increase in the next period. We expect the increases in capital uh, from one period to the next to be big, the f bigger the further we're, we are away from the steady state. So if we're down over here, we expect um, the increase in the capital uh, per worker to be big, 
But as we converge towards the steady state, you can see that the investment green line is very, very close to the break-in investment line. So expect the changes in the capital stock to be smaller and smaller and smaller. And that's exactly what we see. Um, you know, starting right here, you see a big increase in capital per worker um, because investment is so significantly larger than uh, the break-even required. But as we approach the steady state value, the increases in capital per worker are smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Uh, and that's it from below. What about from above? Suppose the suppose we're somewhere over at this point. What would happen? Well, what would happen is um, so just to set up what's going on here. So once again, time is on the horizontal axis. Here we have lowercase k, so that's capital per worker here. Um, I had initially the steady state value, and then right at this gray dotted line, what I did is I increase capital per worker significantly. So capital per worker jumps up significantly, uh, and then what happens? Well, looking at the solo diagram, also looking at this law of motion equation, we know that if we're at a very high amount of capital per worker, then at that very high amount, then the break-even investment line, the amount required to keep capital per worker constant, is significantly above uh, the investment line, where investment is how much people are actually saving and converting into capital. So the difference between the two is how much the capital per worker is going to decrease. So since we're very, very far away from the steady state, the initial moves the initial decreases in capital worker are going to be very large, and as we approach the steady state, as we converge, uh, they'll be less and less, and we'll converge to this K star. And that's exactly what we see. Um, here is where uh, I increase the capital stock quite a bit, and it converges towards that steady state value. Similar story with um, consumption and investment. Cool, great. Hopefully that was helpful. If it was, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Um, and also keep in mind, you know, this is one video of many. Um, so check out the video description for more stuff on solo model. Okay, bye.